This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, War, Peace and the Presidency. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Less than three weeks from the election, Kamala Harris is campaigning in Michigan. Will she lose votes over the Biden administration's support for Israel's war on Gaza and expanding war in Lebanon? A Republican candidate, Donald Trump, has opened a new campaign office in the swing state. For more, we're joined by Abbas Alawiya. He is co-founder of the Uncommitted Movement, which grew out of concerns by Democrats over President Joe Biden's uh, policy toward Israel and Gaza. Uh, Abbas Alawiya is a former Capitol Hill chief of staff for Democratic Congressmember Cory Bush of Missouri. Before that, former longtime congressional staffer. In recent weeks, his relatives in Lebanon have had to flee their homes over Israeli airstrikes. Abbas, welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. We also saw you at the Democratic Convention leading the um, sit in overnight or sleep in, if you will, outside the DNC, demanding a Palestinian American voice be heard on the stage, which the DNC did not agree to. But first, tell us about your family. Tell us what's happening in Lebanon to your grandmother and everyone else there. Thank you so much, Amy. It's great to be on with you and Juan. Um, on my way in, I was on the phone with my family. These days, when it's as hard as it is for Dr. Sidwa and others to have the very, the very, the, 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 the kernels of truth that we can get from Gaza um, exposed, I'm finding I'm finding myself relying more and more on uh, the first-hand accounts of uh, my family members on the ground to under, to really understand what's happening, because I think what gets lost in the thousands and thousands and thousands, the numbers of of humans, of people, of of universes, of um, uh, of, of of people people we know and love that we're, that that are are uh, that are being harmed and killed. They're not they're not numbers. They're they're real people. I'll tell you about my grandmother. My grandmother is an elderly person. She's in her 80s. She has numerous health conditions. Um, uh, her mobility is severely impaired. She's been forced to flee four different times now since the increased aggression by the Israeli military against Lebanese civilians. She loves being in her home. She loves going out to the stoop, the few steps that she's still able to take so that she can enjoy the breeze. Right now, she's in a foreign place. Um, she's someone who feels like she's at the end of her life, and she fears that maybe she'll, she won't get to die in the home that she knows and loves. Um, she's in a foreign apartment just sitting there waiting, as a lot of people are. Uh, but it, but uh, that's not the only experiencing, uh, experience we're having on my way in. I was talking to my aunt. Um, my uncle had gone to Nabotiyye. Um, he's a first responder. And uh, at the top of your show, uh, Amy, you were talking about the municipal, the municipal building in Nabotiyye, where my family is from, uh, that was targeted by the Israeli military today. Um, in that building, the mayor of Nabotiyye was killed as were numerous uh, uh, city officials, um, and my uncle was in that building. Um, we couldn't get a hold of him for a little bit, and um, and we were able to get a hold of him. He, um, some of his friends died, um, were killed, and um, this isn't the first time he's had friends killed as a first responder. As a first responder, f uh, five of his colleagues recently, as they were trying to administer, er, as they were trying to get humanitarian aid out to people, they were seeking shelter in a church in Der Dreya in, in Lebanon, um, and the Israeli military bombed the church that had only first responders in there. You know, my family has very extensive experience, indeed expertise, at, uh, at, at surviving uh, Israeli military violence. You know, the southern Lebanon was occupied from 1982 until 2000. Um, and so um, I, we, I have family members who've endured the, the, the torture, the abuse, uh, the targeting. Um, what, what my family members are reporting now is a level of uh, inhumanity, of violence, of belligerence that we haven't seen before. People are afraid to show up to the, the, to, to the sites uh, that have been destroyed because what the Israeli military is doing now is they'll, they'll bomb whoever shows up to pull bodies out from under the rubble. And, uh, and, and that's what my uncle is. He's a first responder whose job it is to show up and pull out the bodies from under the rubble. And now even people like him are being targeted. not once or twice, but systematically. And so 
I'm an American. I feel like I have a specific responsibility in the world since my country is the one that is sending the weapons that are being used systematically to harm and kill civilians. And the best that I'm being told my government can offer is this leaked letter that you just uh, referenced, the Biden, Biden administration officials warning the Netanyahu government that if, if they keep blocking that humanitarian aid in 30 days, they'll strongly consider what happens with the weapons that we're sending. Our leverage over the Israeli government is not about humanitarian aid. Our leverage with the Israeli government is about the weapons. The more weapons we send them, the more babies they kill. That's just how it works. And so stop sending the weapons. The humanity, what, 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 what the folks in that municipal building where my uncle was in Lebanon, uh, what, what they were doing is they were having a meeting about two trucks of humanitarian aid that had just gotten to Nabotiyya. And they were they were, they were, they, they, it was volunteers and first, first responders and, and city officials meeting, say, thinking together, how are they going to get this aid out? What happened? The people administering the aid were the ones targeted and harmed and killed uh, and traumatized. And so our leverage with the Israeli government is not in how many humanitarian trucks get in. It's in how many 2,000 pound bombs we send them to obliterate entire societies. I think our government would do better at usually, uh, actually using the leverage that it has. And, uh, Abbas, I wanted to ask you, in terms of the displacement, an estimated 1.2 million people just in a few weeks, uh, The uh, where are these folks supposed to go as Israel continues to advance uh, into Lebanon? Yeah, thank you for the question, Juan. Um, Virtually everyone I know um, in Lebanon has been displaced. Most of my family lives in South Lebanon um, or in the southern suburbs of Beirut um, or in Beirut, the city proper. Um, you know, there's, um, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a situation where it, it, in, in the immediate aftermath of the very intense escalation, uh, we had family members, friends um, with no, literally nowhere to go, um, staying on uh, the, the, the whatever, whatever is available of the, of the uh, Beirut beach, you know, just, just staying there, waiting, waiting for the bombs to stop. Um, uh, you know, people are in these really weird situations where they're trying to find somewhere else in Lebanon on to go and they're being asked uh, for a month's rent or, or sorry a year's rent in advance if they're able uh, in order to be able to seek shelter this is a country that prior to this specific uh, uh, inhumane escalation by the Israeli military was already in a state of economic freefall uh, most of the people being harmed are are, are people who l either live in poverty or, or or live with you know the complexities of human life I have a cousin just a few days ago who showed up to my aunt's house after where he lives in central Beirut um, uh, was bombed, and he showed up to uh, to my to my aunt's house covered in debris. With him, it was him and his his wife and and their two college aged children. Both he and his wife are people who are blind, and so th you know the th think about the complexities of human life that we try to account for. I'm a Democrat, so we talk about you know the care economy. We talk about uh, wanting to support people uh, as they age, wanting to support people uh, in their disabilities. People in all of their complexities are living through the complexities of their everyday life and simultaneously the walls around them are caving in on them, are, are slamming down on their heads. What are we even talking about as Democrats if we speak so much to the value of, of human life, of the dignity of, of workers when our party's official policy is to send more and more weapons to a fascist government that is on a killing spree, on a baby killing spree? And so it's the, 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 the realities of, of being displaced. It's not just sort of I'll move from one apartment to another. It's 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 the uh, you know, the uh, the. Um, you know, everything around you, your entire existence is, is, is uprooted. It's a violent, violent reality. So and I, was, I, I, wanted, I wanted to ask you, uh, what do you, uh, what have you asked uh, those, you and others in the uncommitted movement of the Harris campaign? Uh, what's been their response? And what do you say to people who say, well, let's get Harris elected into office because Trump is too dangerous and we'll work on shifting her position once she's in the White House? 
My message to every Democratic voter who's voting for Harris, um, to every person who identifies as a progressive, uh, to every person who believes in the sanctity of every child, the, the sacredness of every child, of every elder, of every worker, the time to say that you will hold Harris accountable is not after the election, it's now. If you intend on voting for Harris, you know, the great leader and Palestinian American scholar Nur Arakat came out with a thread uh, yesterday on, uh, on Twitter where she's urging everyone who is voting for Harris, don't vote for Harris in private, state publicly that you are voting for, for, for Kamala Harris and be specific about how you will be accountable to the people, the Palestinian Americans who are currently, who currently have family enduring a genocide. How will you be accountable to them? How are you insisting even through your vote, that you will hold Democrats accountable to stop the weapons that are flowing to harm and kill civilians. So that's that's my message to every voter hearing this. If you're going to vote for Harris, if you believe, I believe that we've got to block Donald Trump. If you believe that, then state that publicly and say, and once we block Donald Trump, here's how I will hold Harris accountable, that during her first 100 days, she must achieve a ceasefire. And the way to achieve a ceasefire is to stop sending the weapons. So we have to state that publicly, and we have been doing everything we can to offer Vice President Harris opportunity after opportunity to meet the community that is experiencing this immense level of pain where they are. It just so happens that Vice President Harris needs every vote she can get in a state like Michigan. And a lot of us in Michigan are currently in a state of mourning, of mourning. My friend's father, Hash Kamil Jawad, was a, a, a someone who was uh, you know, like, like the people today in Nabatiya trying to get humanitarian aid to people and was killed for doing so by, the, by an Israeli military airstrike. He's an American. This is a community in a state of grief. And so as we have been urging the vice president's team, please, please meet with people who are directly impacted, meet with Lebanese Americans and meet with Palestinian Americans who have had family killed over there by the bombs that the vice president and the president's administration is sending. What we've been told repeatedly is, you know, the, the, the vice president is very busy. She's on the campaign trail. She can't really be meeting, uh, taking meetings like that right now. And then the next day we'll see the vice president has met, she, you know, they put out a release saying she met with Palestinian, or she met with Muslim Americans, Arab Americans, but she only meets with people who have endorsed her campaign. That's an inappropriate posture to have at this moment. If you are going to Michigan and ask these people for their vote, you need to recognize that, that Arab American, Palestinian American communities right now are in a state of grieving and you, you have an obligation, a responsibility to sit down from, uh, and, and, and hear from them. We've heard over the past year repeated reports of the administration prioritizing meetings with the families of Israeli Americans who have family being held hostage in Gaza. It's important that the administration hear from those families. Why is it? Why is it that the president, that the vice president has have not taken the time to sit down with Palestinian American families who have family over there? I, I have asked this question repeatedly of the vice president's team. I was told that, you know, it, it, she, she's spoken to some families in the past. She's had sit downs in the past, but also I, I was told explicitly that she has not sat down with a single Palestinian American family who has fa who has uh, a, a family uh, killed in Gaza this year, in the year 2024. What are you waiting for? Vice President Harris. And, and you know, uh, Amy, you had Dr. Sidwa here. Those doctors, those U.S. medical workers, they have been asking Vice President Harris to sit down with them. She won't do it. Vi President Biden won't do it. And so, it, in my estimation, it feels like Vice President Harris is not doing what it takes to be both humane and compassionate and uh, sensitive to the, rea the political realities in Michigan that are necessary to engage with in order to beat Donald Trump. And so, we, you know, ev everybody who's going to try and beat Donald Trump, despite that, needs to make a public commitment now that they'll hold Vice President Harris accountable, especially during her first hundred days, to stop the weapons uh, from, uh, from flowing to Netanyahu's killing spree.